Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology and today we are going to discuss something very important, a very fundamental topic yet misunderstood and I will try my best to clarify so many misconceptions and I will also try my best to explain how to see this uh, area of astrology which gets very complicated sometimes and yes you saw it right the topic is functional malefics so if you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you like this video then click the thumbs up at the end after watching it and if you want to know which functional malefic how is it behaving in your chart or what results will it give or you want to know about your marriage or career or your affair or your health or anything else then you can please go to my website and book a reading with me because i need to see the whole chart before answering any personal query okay you will find the link of my website in the description section of this video and all other my videos and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will be there and he will help you understand functional malefics all right so now i will discuss about functional benefits also here because it is the same i mean functionally they are having some rules uh, some role to play in the chart that is what is the meaning of the word functional malefic or functional benefic so now we all know the natural malefics who are they sun mars saturn rahu ketu these five are natural malefics okay and then the remaining four are benefics jupiter moon mercury venus in general <laughs> of course moon and mercury uh, mercury is a conditional benefic and it can also be malefic if it is sitting with a malefic and moon depends on some other criteria if it is actually a benefic or it is a malefic but in general they say these four are benefics but now see what happens is when you say that some planets are functionally benefic for a chart which means that they may be malefics or benefics by their natural composition which may be they may be any of the nine planets but if they are ruling some difficult houses in the chart depending on your ascendant all right not moon sign not sun sign not any other zodiac sign depending on your ascendant the lagna if you do not know what lagna is then you can go to this playlist and here itself you will see the video on lagna just uh, go to this playlist and in the bottom you will see lagna is there so suppose your lagna is aries okay then jupiter is ruling which house jupiter is ruling the ninth house and jupiter is ruling the twelfth house all right and jupiter is also a natural benefic and so so for example if you're taurus ascendant then saturn is ruling which houses saturn is ruling the ninth house and the tenth house but it is also a natural malefic so now before explaining this topic it is important to understand which houses are benefic and which houses are malefic houses so in general they they say that the lords of the kendras they are good planets for that chart and the lords of the trines are extremely auspicious so trines are 159 and the kendra kendras are 14710 okay because they represent the pillar of the horoscope the kendras and trines represent our inherent inner disposition which we have been cultivating for many many lifetimes so they always benefit us those traits and apart from that there are many other theories of a planet being malefic or benefic and then the houses like 6 8 and 12 these houses are known as difficult houses as you know they are known as dustanas and third house can also be considered to be a dustana here so third house is also included in the list okay and 11th house is considered to be the worst of the houses but in kaliuga it is considered to be the best because it gives fulfillment of desire and why it was considered worst because that hinders you from going ahead in your spiritual journey because then you feel that i do not need to go to god i can fulfill all my desires here itself that is why it is known as the that is why it, it is considered it was considered to be a very bad house but in Kali Yuga, materialistic desires are very prominent in people and they are only gearing towards fulfilling those desires so any planet in the 11th house or the lord of the 11th house is considered to be extremely uh, beneficial for the chart okay and then the second house is uh, considered to be the house for money so any planet in the second house or wherever the second lord is going and sitting that can give us financial benefits and 
all the houses are covered i guess <laughs> so this is how the scene works so there are many definitions in classics that the third house is good or bad or this that 12th house some say that the 12th house is neutral and some say the 8th house gives results based on the association okay but in my experience i have seen that the dusthanas especially the 6th 8th and 12th wherever whatever it is they give challenges in life okay now that necessarily is not bad all the time but challenges will be there okay so now the uh, the other thing we need to understand is suppose a planet is getting activated by dasha we all know what dashas are i have not made videos on dashas but i'll be making soon so dashas are like time periods of a particular planet so uh, there is vimshotri dasha which is calculated based on the nakshatra of the moon so in vimshotri dasha suppose there is a planet whose dasha starts okay and then the person the client comes and asks you suppose you are an astrologer giving read giving a reading and then the person comes and asks you okay my venus mahadasha has started so will it be good or bad so the problem is people do not know what actually good bad is let me give you an example a, a planet which is placed in a certain house can be good for something can be bad for something else for example take the case of the sixth house sixth house what what, what is the sixth house is the house of celibacy divorce separation for marriage it's considered to be very bad but for job it is considered to be a positive house if the sixth house has links with the 10th house or the 11th house then the person gets tremendous success in competition so if you are attending an ias exam or a upsc or whatever you call it or a iit or you are giving some exam which is very competitive then you need the houses 6 and 10 or 6 and 11 otherwise it's very difficult to get success rather than a planet sitting in the 9th house and getting link with the 5th house or the 11th house it is millions of times better to have a planet sitting in the 6th house which has a connection with the 10th house or the 11th house because when the 6th house gets activated by the dasha of that planet we work extremely hard and when we work extremely hard we get success that time so now if the person asks you okay suppose i am sitting in karol bag delhi and i am doing my preparation for upsc exams and then the person is asking you suppose the 11th lord is sitting in 6th house for example suppose then what do you say to that person oh it's the 6th house the dasha is going to be terrible it's going to be bad no you don't say that because then the question is specific to entrance exams where competition is there so whenever the 11th house and 6th houses are getting linked then that is very good but suppose a person is uh, planning to get married and that time the 6th uh, house is getting activated then you might say that it there might be delays in your marriage then you can say that or suppose a person is coming to you that and asking oh i want to get a job suppose my jupiter is in the 6th house so will i get a job if the person is asking and then the answer is yes if the other combinations are supporting it you can get a job because second house sixth house tenth house these three houses are the artha houses they are part of the artha trikon as we all know right and the 11th house is the house of income and gain so whenever these three houses 2 6 10 get linked with 11 there's tremendous monetary income which comes so that means whenever a person is asking you will the dasha be good or bad you have to be very specific you have to tell the person that this will be good for what this will be bad for what so for example if there is a planet in the 8th house and it is having link with the second house or the 10th house or the 11th house for example then it is very good for uh, getting uh, money from sources like inheritance or winning a lottery especially if the 5th house is also linked with the 8th or the 10th or the 11th then that's fantastic but if the same person is sitting in a ashram and he's doing some meditation practices that time the 8th house can prove to be very disastrous because it is placed 12th from the 9th house which is the house of enlightenment you can have quarrels with your guru that time or you might lose faith 8th house as in sanskrit it is known as the 9th uh, house is the house of bhagya and 8th house is the loss of bhagya so it is the house of durbhagya as they say durbhagya means loss of fortune and the greatest loss of fortune is you lose faith in your guru or god 
that's the greatest misfortune anybody can have not that you have lost your job not that you died even not that you got divorced not that your son or your daughter perished none of these is having any comparison to the degree uh, that a person can lose faith in god that's the greatest misfortune somebody can have so now suppose uh, the 10th lord is sitting in 8th or the 8th lord is sitting in 10th for example and then that planet gets activated and you you tell him oh 8th house is terrible you know why because oh 8th house is a terrible house but now it has linked to the powerful houses so then it will give you rise in name fame status but suppose a person is asking you that oh how about my spiritual life then you have to warn the person that you need to be careful so before you give a blind judgment of a planet it it is good or it is bad you have to see for which houses for which area of life is the person asking the question and if the person is asking you in general a question that will this be good or bad well then you have to tell that okay suppose sixth house is getting activated so there can be issues in your relationships issues doesn't mean divorce so whenever i say issues people will say oh we like a divorce no no no, no. Di- di- divorce doesn't happen by sixth house for divorce there are so many other things you have to see there has to be the dasha of a malefic and then the eighth house has to come into consideration 12th house is the house of loss because there's there's so much headache in this process now so unless the whole chart is supporting divorce the sixth house alone cannot give you divorce okay so if somebody has a planet in sixth house and your that dasha is starting so re- uh, b- and you are married so don't think that you are going to have a divorce you will see videos in youtube where they say that oh a planet in the sixth house will give divorce no that is nonsense it gives challenges in marriage and relationships that is true but divorce is something different divorce is like very big government also comes into picture there okay so just because you have a planet in the sixth house it doesn't mean you will get divorced okay so don't think like that that's too much of a negative thinking so what i was telling is that before answering yes no good bad please check for which area of life is the person asking okay and now there's a frequently asked question that okay my uh, suppose you are a uh, taurus lagna for taurus lagna this is always asked suppose my saturn is there uh, in some xyz house okay and it is the ninth lord and the tenth lord then the dasha of saturn starts then what will happen will it be good or bad this is the typical question all the comments in youtube are flooded with only one thing my saturn is placed here my jupiter is here will it be good or will it be bad all right so now how do you analyze this and there's a lot of complexity which is there at, at least it is made very complex in many videos in youtube and in many other forums so see it's very simple actually you don't have to complicate things saturn is a natural malefic you know that we all know that why because it is the karaka for the 6th 8th and 12th houses these three dusthanas have the karaka as saturn so wherever saturn is sitting you will get a flavor of the 6th house 8th house and the 12th house there that is why it is the karaka for discipline struggle hard work effort so so whichever ascendant you are whichever sign saturn is in whichever house your saturn is in irrespective of that it is in libra or in aries it is in capricorn it is in aquarius whichever house it doesn't matter saturn dasha means you have to work hard and there will be struggles take it in writing that doesn't mean that you will die or you will have a divorce <laughs> but your life will demand discipline from you all right that that's irrespective of the rulership saturn has even if you are a libra lagna or a taurus lagna so now see suppose you are a libra lagna or a taurus lagna because there's big big confusion for these two lagnas because saturn is a yog karaka for these two ascendants yog karaka means a planet which is owning simultaneously a kendra and a trikon so if you are a libra lagna saturn rules the fourth house and the fifth house and if you are a taurus lagna then saturn will rule the ninth house and the tenth house okay so now suppose now forget where saturn is placed forget the sign forget the house where saturn is placed okay just take the lordship so now suppose you are either a taurus or a libra lagna and your saturn mahadasha has got activated okay 19 years of saturn mahadasha or antar dasha of saturn okay so then what do you do so your life will demand discipline that's true but because now in this chart saturn is ruling the ninth house and the 10th house for a taurus lagna you will see that 
opportunities related to religion and career is coming that will happen and that is very good because 10,000 9,000 these two are very good houses in the chart they are extremely powerful houses so even though you are having those struggles but you are ultimately gaining things at the end so this is how you study functional malefics okay so suppose you are a uh, suppose you are a leo ascendant so for a leo jupiter rules which houses the sign sagittarius is in the fifth house and the sign pisces is in the eighth house now suppose your jupiter mahadasa starts you are a leo ascendant then what jupiter is jupiter is the karaka for children and husband for a woman traditionally <laughs> and it represents spirituality gurus divinity in general expansion basically that's what jupiter is divine knowledge connection to gurus and teaching education all these things so when jupiter madasha starts whichever ascendant you are those things will come into for forefront because ultimately the planet is having a significance whichever houses it is ruling that is also important but the primary significations will not change okay so now see it's a very tricky situation so now jupiter is originally the karaka for the ninth house right ninth house is the house of spirituality and eighth house is the loss of spirituality so for a leo ascendant now what happens jupiter is it's a very tricky situation it is ruling the fifth house of which it is also a karaka okay fifth house is the house of mantras and children but now it is also ruling the eighth house okay so then what can happen is you can get doubts while chanting mantras but because the mool trikon sign is falling in the fifth house which is sagittarius you will still be able to continue if you are chanting the mantras and the other thing depends also where jupiter is placed so suppose jupiter is placed in the ninth house so then for a leo ascendant then jupiter is ruling the fifth eighth and it is sitting in the ninth house so then the fifth and ninth houses become extremely strong then the results of spirituality will be much more prominent all right and suppose it is sitting in the seventh house so then what happens is the eighth lord is sitting in the seventh house so there can be some uh, tears or suffering which you see in uh, marriage that can happen because the eighth house shows tears or some kind of depression you can undergo depending on the other placements but now the fifth lord is also sitting so that means mantras will be very good for your marriage okay or you can also have a love marriage because fifth house shows uh, love affairs and eighth house and twelfth house they show physical pleasures no bad pleasure sex sexuality all these things premarital sex all these things so these things can happen if a leo ascendant has jupiter in the seventh house because the fifth lord and the eighth lord are sitting in the seventh house okay and suppose for a leo ascendant the planet jupiter is sitting in the eleventh house so now as i said earlier fifth lord and the eighth lord is sitting in the 11th house then what can happen is the person can suddenly gain a lot of money the person can win lottery stocks investments fantastic placement that is for for doing all these things all right and then you can go on and on taking other examples now take the example of cancer ascendants now if you see cancer ascendants jupiter rules which houses jupiter is ruling the sixth house and then it is also ruling the ninth house all right and suppose jupiter is exalted in the ascendant because in cancer it gets exalted so now suppose you see the chart of a cancer lagna and you see oh guru is in exaltation fantastic wow <laughs> yes have you seen charts of cancer ascendants with exalted jupiter in the lagna it is in dig ball it's in directional strength wow fantastic it is that is what you will say right well that is true that is true for the natural significations of jupiter which means the person's ability to connect to god is at a very high level jupiter in cancer shows the last stage of yoga which is bhakti yoga which lord krishna culminates the gita at the end bhakti mayim param kritwa that shloka is there because bhakti yoga means you are trying to connect to god on a emotional level just the way you have emotions for your son your husband your daughter your mother your father your anybody your friends that same level of emotions you are having for god yes the way mirabai had she used to keep dancing about while she used to keep uh, talking about krishna while she used to uh, keep singing 
yes about krishna she was lost completely so that is the meaning of jupiter in cancer depending on the other placements in the chart of course but suppose now you are a cancer lagna and your jupiter is exalted in the lagna itself so now what happens is the ninth lord is sitting in the lagna which is very good for spirituality but the sixth lord is also sitting in the lagna okay so it is also the ruler of the sixth house here then what happens is when the dasha of jupiter gets active you might uh, face challenges in your marriage that can happen at times okay again i am saying challenges i am not saying divorce so don't misquote me don't say that i am creating fear so just because the sixth lord is getting activated it doesn't mean that you will get divorced okay so many people keep asking oh this astrologer said my sixth house is getting activated will i be divorced no the answer is no the, all the other things have to support uh, for one particular event okay and sixth house can sometimes also give you physical separation which means suppose uh, the sixth house has connection to the 10th house then what can happen is uh, you might have to go somewhere for uh, having for your work okay to some other state especially the third ninth or the 12th houses are also getting linked so suppose you are in mumbai then for two months you might have to leave your wife from mumbai and you have you might have to go to delhi so sixth house can also show physical separation you see not necessarily ma mental separation that oh i i hate my partner or something like this okay and now you take the example of aries ascendants now for aries jupiter is the ninth lord so it is fantastic for spirituality it is the best planet in the chart but it is also the 12th lord so it will also give you expenses so for aries ascendants whenever guru is getting activated jupiter is getting activated you will have some kind of expenses now if jupiter is sitting in a good house suppose jupiter is sitting in the fourth house or the fifth house then these expenses can be related to matters of education or if it is sitting in the 10th house it can be in re relation to your business or your career that can happen that suppose you have a youtube channel and then you are planning to buy a big camera okay so loss is not always bad that will depend on the whole chart that what kind of loss are you having because if the 12th lord is in the 10th house then it can happen that after you spend some money you get tremendous name and fame so suppose you are shooting video with this uh, uh, nexus 5x suppose and then your 12th lord is in the 10th suppose for aries lagna jupiter is getting activated then what will happen is you will be like oh no 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 now i will take a big mobile maybe or i will take a 4k webcam something like that and by that what will happen is you will get more name and fame that will happen because it is having connection with the 10th house or it is having connection with the uh, 12th house uh, the 11th house in that case also it can happen so that is how you study functional malefics okay so even uh, take the case for leo ascendants like they say mars is a yoga karaka why because for cancer and leo it rules a kendra and a trikon so for leo it is ruling the fourth house and the ninth house yes mars so now suppose your mars gets activated then what will happen you can have fights you can have quarrels because that is the natural signification of mars you will be very aggressive very disciplined very 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 analytical mars is very analytical it says that either this way or that way not somewhere in the middle it says my way or highway <laughs> because mars is a soldier soldier doesn't like to listen to others it will only follow what the king said so what whatever you want you will just go and do it straight away without thinking much that's the challenge of mars but now suppose you are a leo ascendant and wherever mars is placed and mars is getting activated suppose okay your mars mahadash has started so then religion ninth house and fourth house is the house of property all these things will get activated so suppose mars is sitting mm, uh, in the fifth house for example then suddenly you can find that uh, you are finding some kind of profits from property it can happen or you are going to spiritual places because the ninth lord is sitting in the fifth fifth lord in ninth ninth lord in fifth is fantastic for spirituality it is like seeing guru and mantra are having link fantastic that is okay and now you take the example of aries ascendants where the lagna lord itself is ruling adustana 
so for aries and libra their lagna lords i mean other ascend some other ascendants also mars and venus ruled ascendants the lagna lord itself is ruling of usthana and even for aquarius saturn is ruling which houses the lagna in the 12th house so wherever saturn is sitting irrespective of that whenever that planet gets activated the lagna lord gets activated the results of that dusthana house will also come okay so suppose if you are a aries ascendant and your mars is sitting in the 7th house so that means now the lagna lord is sitting in 7th and the 8th lord is also sitting in 7th so there can still be some challenges in marriage okay because it is not only the lagna lord it is also the ruler of a dusthana so just because it is an ascendant lord wherever it sits it will be auspicious it is not like that it is false to say like that i don't know who's who i don't care whoever says what but i have seen myself even if the lagna lord is considered to be a benefic but when it is also ruling a dusthana okay when it uh, gets activated there are struggles there are challenges okay so this is how you have to study the chart don't just go out blindly that okay jupiter is functional malefic for libra lagna and for some other lagnas okay then what will happen it will do good or bad no the natural significations will always be there and then functionally the significations will also come okay so as i said that if the the shaft sun gets activated you will develop a desire to show yourself to the world to the universe that desire will come in you irrespective of other things it will happen okay but which houses is sun ruling and which house is sun placed that will change the story so suppose you are a capricorn ascendant and your sun is ruling the 8th house because for capricorn the sign leo is in the 8th house and suppose your sun is placed in the 9th house for example so then it can create some struggles with the guru that can happen or you might start spiritual practices you might again stop start stop start stop these things can happen but at the same time you will have a desire to show yourself to the entire world because that's what sun is when sun gets activated the natural signification of the sun planet will manifest irrespective of other things but externally you will also be dealing with the circumstances which the uh, temporary lordships are permitting all right and here i would end this video by saying that i will be making videos on every ascendant like i've started the series on ascendants like i have made for aries and i will also be making videos for planets for each ascendant so maybe tomorrow i'll uh, upload another video on planets for aries so in that i will tell you that for each ascendant which planet is a malefic and which planet is a benefic and how to see that and how to know when what kind of results it can give okay and ultimately what results it will give that depends on the whole chart and so many other things so just because a planet is sitting in the 8th house it doesn't mean it will give you insult or a planet is in 6th house it doesn't mean that it will give you divorce okay so there you go if you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation regarding your functional benefics or your functional malefics then please go to my website you will find the link of the website in the description of this video below and book a reading with me and if you like this video click the thumbs up okay wish you good luck bye bye see you